Hello everyone! So with Horizon Forbidden West coming out soon, some of you are probably aware that the area known as the Forbidden West has already been mentioned a couple of times in Horizon Zero Dawn. So in this video I want to go over every single time the Forbidden West is mentioned directly by a character in the game, or if it's referenced to in one of the data points. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So the first mention of the Forbidden West you have likely heard if you have beaten the game. Cause during the main quest Deep Secrets of the Earth, as you are on your way into Sunfall, Silence will mention the Forbidden West. Sunfall. The Mad King Drawn Summer Palace. A bulwark of Karja might against the howling Forbidden West. Thanks for the history lesson. But they have no idea what lies beneath. We will learn much from this Aloy. That's what I'm hoping. So not really much to say about this mention, other than Silence just pointing out that Sunfall is the fortress that stands between the Kaja territory and the Forbidden West. The next mention is by Tiasa inside All Mother Mountain, when she gives you the background story for why Rust is an outcast. Now you can ask Tersa about why Rust is an outcast once you have completed the main quest, The Heart of the Nora. Now Rust's story is quite long, so I won't be showing the entire thing in this video, I'm only gonna show the part where Tisa mentions the Forbidden West. If you want to see the full story, I will leave a link to it in the description as well as a link on screen right now so you can listen to it fully. You can also hear it in the game yourself as you can always go back to Old Mother Mountain and ask her about Rust. Really not that simple, Tirsa. But I guess it's close enough. I know the path ahead will be dangerous. To kill a metal devil sounds impossible, but I believe in you. Uh, thank you. So, Rost never finished his mission. To the contrary, he killed all twelve. Tracked them to disparate places the world over, he said. Meridian, Ban-Ur, the Claim, Utaru Land, further even, into the Forbidden West. The last he killed nearly got the best of him. Wounded, he stumbled and crawled back to us, hoping to die as close to the Sacred Land as he could. He never expected nor asked to be dragged across the border and nursed back to health. That was done to him leaving us, the matriarchs, in a difficult position. So to give a quick summary of the story, Rasta's daughter was killed by some bandits that came to the sacred land, and he wanted to take revenge by tracking them down. He had to go as far as to the Forbidden West in order to kill all of them. So that means we now know that Rust has been to the Forbidden West. So when the game comes out, will we learn more about what Rust exactly did in the Forbidden West, and who the killers were? It'll be exciting to learn more about his journey in the Forbidden West. Also an interesting thing I always like to point out when we talk about Rasta's backstory is that the brave that pulled him back into the Sacred Land and nursed him back to good health is likely Art Grada. At least a lot of fan theories suggest that Art Grada is the one that nursed him back to health and therefore it's the reason Rust and Aloy now takes care of her. I personally agree with this theory, but do let me know in the comments below if you also agree that Grada is likely the one that did it. Those who spill their tribe During the end card scene of the side quest Queen's Gambit, Manasha will mention that she has been two years in the Forbidden West. Edaman, my brother, welcome home. You have nothing to fear. You are now under the protection of the Sundom. My protection. As is your mother, she will not be harmed. You have my word, the law of the sun. Aloy, it seems I see your influence everywhere. You've done so much for the Sundom, and it will always be appreciated. You have my thanks. May you walk in the light. Appalling. I spent two years in the Forbidden West setting this up, and the redhead gets all the credit? I'm still getting paid, right? You'll be lucky if I let you live. I couldn't have done this without you. 
When we meet again, I'll give you a proper thanks, I promise. So now we know that Vanasha has experience in being in the Forbidden West, and it probably is very likely we'll see her in the game. It could also be that she will act as sort of a guide for Aloy, as she is the person with the most experience of the region that Aloy knows. The next mention of the Forbidden West is at the very end of the side quest Acquired Taste, when you hand in the blood for the Stormbird. This will be the fifth time you hand in blood to Bryn, and during this conversation Bryn will mention the Forbidden West. Maybe I've spent too much time with you. I can almost feel the lightning in this. And the taste, huh? Metal striking sparks along a sharpening stone, lingering. Here, uh, touch it to your tongue, and... Nope, that's your thing, not mine. You look startled. Are you okay? I... I must leave. You should too. Without a story, I brought down a stormbird. You did. You're very able. And you're right. Ode is owed. But no more stories of the past. All told. All done. Future stories. I saw an onrushing storm. The future comes hungry for man and machine. It will catch me, I expect, catch us all. So enough hunts, enough visions. I'll run, <laughs> chase that teasing sun to the forbidden west. I, I don't understand. I mean, not that I ever understand, but are you saying we should fear what's coming? Oh, yes! Jungle on fire! Machine blue light dying out in the eddies of ashes. You, fallen, pale as snow flash, eyes staring open. The metal world, but not the one I sought. The future is a frightful dream, Huntress. My name is Aloy. I grew fond of you. Your curiosities and disbeliefs, Aloy. If you weather this storm, look for me. I'd like that. Where? In the west? In the storm? In dreams. Yes. So it seems that Bryn is another character we'll see again in the Forbidden West, given the fact that he says he's going there. I personally look forward to meeting him again, and maybe we got some more crazy stories. Now, if you paid attention to what Bryn also was saying right there, he mentioned an upcoming storm. Is he referring to the storm that we have seen in the trailer, or maybe just simply talking about Hades' attack on Meridian towards the end of this game? I personally lean more towards him referring to the storm in the trailer. He also mentions that Aloy was quite pale and lying with her eyes right open. Is he saying that if we don't overcome the storm that Aloy could die, or is it a bigger warning? Do let me know what you think about Bryn's story right here, because I'm sure there's quite a lot of perspectives you can have on it. And I'm not quite sure what my takeaway is on it quite yet, but I'm interested to hear some more opinions on it. If you return to Bryn's house after you've completed the quest, you can also hear Aloy mention the Forbidden West. Simply come back to his house later on after completing the quest and walk into the house and you'll hear her mention it. Bryn's gone. To the Forbidden West. Well, it can't be stranger out there than he is. So there's not really much to say about this mention, because Aloy is just saying that Bryn did indeed go to the Forbidden West. However, it is cool to hear Aloy mention the Forbidden West directly. The next mention of the Forbidden West is during the side quest on Other Fallen. It's during the part where you head to the Shrine of Kings, where you have to talk to a Sun Priest. During this conversation, you have to choose the option, your soldiers are weak, and then thing. he will mention we the Forbidden to have West. A look. It may have been meant for the Mad Sun King, but it's out. Turn away, child. 
The abiding Jahaman wishes to be alone in his retreat. If you want to be alone, go someplace else. Others want to pray here. Defile it, you mean? Yet another debasement of what was once pure. Truly, our tribe has lost the light. Our king is false, our temple is corrupt, and our soldiers weak. The sun hastens across the sky for shame. Why do you think your army is weak? Because you're not at war with everyone? A Karja throne relying on forged dirt mercenaries? Preposterous! The so-called liberation was nothing but a purge. Our most blessed warriors, chased out of the city, exiled to Sunfall and the Forbidden West. Our tribe is torn. The ones who walked in light now go by shadow. And yet everyone but you seems happy they're gone. I'm done arguing with you. Stay or go, but I won't allow you to keep others away. I am here by the will of the sun. If you won't accept change, you should try to make peace with it. Your bitterness has poisoned you. I have no need of your pity. I wasn't offering it. But if you step aside, you can keep your pride, since it's so important to you. There'll be a reckoning. You'll back away from it. So it seems that some of the best Shadow Kaja soldiers were exiled all the way to the Forbidden West. Which means we might likely see some of them when we play the Forbidden West game. Could it be that some of the remains of the Shadow Kaja are still out there and still doing something? I don't know, but maybe we'll find out once we play the game. The next one is a rather small mention. It's one of the quest givers for the Frozen Wilds that spawns close to Meridian. Now, he will only spawn as long as you have not talked to any of the other quest givers for the Frozen Wilds, and if you have not entered the Frozen Wilds. He will simply mention Forbidden West in one of his dialogues that you can hear when you walk past him. Now, he doesn't always mention it, as he does have quite a few different dialogue options, but the one here you can see for yourself. I also want to point out, if you talk to him directly, he does not talk about the Forbidden West at all. Direction of the Forbidden West. So not really much to say about this one either, as he's simply saying that the Forbidden West is the opposite direction of the cut, which you could have made that conclusion by simply looking at the map. Is my fate to only... So those were all the characters that directly mentioned the Forbidden West. So now let's go over all the data points where the Forbidden West is mentioned. There are three glyphs in the game that mention the Forbidden West directly. And the first one can be found here in the Palace of the Sun, called the Sun Kings. If you open the data point and scroll down to the paragraph about Basadid, you will see that that's the part where the Forbidden West is mentioned. Now feel free to pause the video right here and read it for yourself. But the paragraph basically mentions that Sunfall was created by Basadid, as he was the one that declared the West to be forbidden, and probably likely the one that came up with the term Forbidden West. As you can see in the paragraph above, he did this because his brother Ivri ventured into the Forbidden West and never returned. So in the Forbidden West, we can likely get some more information about what exactly happened to Ivri. Did he simply die in the Forbidden West, or did he create another Kaja settlement out there? Who knows, maybe when we play the game we can come across some remnants of the Kaja that ventured out there. It will certainly be interesting to see where they go with this plot in the game. The next glyph that mentions the Forbidden West can be found in Bright Market. It is down on the harbor and you will be able to find it. The name is called the History of Sunfall, so I guess it's no surprise that it mentions the Forbidden West. Would you like to buy something today? So when you open up the data point, you can scroll down to the second to last paragraph, and in there you will find a mention of the Forbidden West. Now it doesn't mention much about the Forbidden West here other than the people that usually go there don't come back. So in other words, it's not a place you would really want to go to. Now this could just be some Kaja propaganda, but I'm sure we'll learn more about it once we get our hands on the game. The final data point that mentions the Forbidden West can be found at Blazon Arch, and it's literally called the Forbidden West. 
Simply head down to the harbor and in a boat you will find the data point. The data point is written by a healer that took care of the people lucky enough to return from the Forbidden West. They then told the stories of what they encountered there, which he has then written down in this glyph. I will now slowly scroll through the data points so you have a chance to read it yourself. Sorry, but I'm not the best at reading things out loud. So, in this data point, try to pay attention to all the similarities between what is written here and all the things you have seen in the trailers for the game so far. There's actually quite a lot of good things, and do let me know what you make about this data point, as there's quite a lot of interesting information here. One thing I will point out is the data point mentions that there's a tribe in the Forbidden West that drinks machine blood. Now that fits perfectly into what we learned earlier in this video is that Bryn headed to the Forbidden West. It could be that he already knew about that tribe and he seeks to join them. So who knows, maybe we'll see in the Forbidden West. Another thing I wanted to include, which is not a direct mention of the Forbidden West, but still relates to the Forbidden West, is some of the tribes you can meet from the Forbidden West. Now, we already know some of the tribes that are going to be in the game, and two of them can already be found here in Horizon Zero Dawn, which is the Utaru and Tanakh. So right here at the beginning of the Honor the Fallen side quest, after you have started the quest by talking to the priest, on his left side there is an Utaru called Rhea that you can talk to. You look like you've traveled far, Outlander. From the Great Plains. But not alone. Never alone. This was a city of cages two harvests ago. Wooden bars leave marks. I kept those marks. I can still feel the bars. They took you as a slave. But you escaped. During the liberation. My friend and I, they'd put us to work in the quarries together. We'd grown alike, so we fled together. But in the smoke, the trees, we ran right into the machines. I kept running. I thought she was just behind me. She is still. Wherever I go, just behind me. And that's why I came back. To finally free us from that moment. But I need your help to do it. In the quarry, it always rained. And we named the mosses growing between the bricks. We waited in cages for them to come for us each morning, not knowing if we would see another sunset. Our knees were always skinned, hair matted with croy clay, red as sunstruck shoulders. Then later in the quest you can talk to Rhea again once you have cleared out all the snap moors at the Lake Shrine. When we fled from our cages during the liberation, I tore through this clearing, thinking my friend was behind me. I kept running, but here she remains. Thank you for making it safe for me to return. I don't want to rush you, but it won't stay safe for long. I understand. I've done this before in waking dreams. In the pool, I'll find the bracelet of seeds she dropped when she fell. The seeds will be split, escaped, grown wild. She's passing from my memory into the jungles. I'll tell her it was I who died here and became a stranger in our own land. And she who still lives in every time of planting, of rains, harvests. <gasps> oh. What is it? There. Her bracelet. And I thought she was behind me. But there's only my reflection. Do you need to be alone? For the first time, I am. So not really much to take away from this in regards to the Forbidden West, but it is interesting that we can meet an Otaro before we head to the Forbidden West. And the place in the game where you can meet somebody from the Tanakh tribe is doing the side quest Sunstone Rock. One of the objectives you are tasked to go and kill Ulia who escaped from Sunstone Rock. Now, she can be located in the bandit camp in the jungle area, and once you have you killed her, you will be able to have a brief conversation with her. <sighs> no. 
No way we could have talked about this, huh? All the Kaja did was talk. Talk and bleed. Talk and shackle me. But you, you fought like a Tanakh. I'd have taken you for my child. You can't just take a child. The strong take from the weak. weak. And in the taking, I made stronger. These stories pricked into my skin. Look. Children, riches, lives, and land. All of these have been mine. Drink of my... <coughs> my blood. And they'll live on. <gasps> no, Ulia. I've... I've got enough stories to carry. So not much to take away from this other than Ulia gave us a poor first impression of the Tanakh tribe. But I don't think we're going to be particularly friendly with them. But again, who knows. Now, before I end this video, I just want to go over three places where people have told me there are Forbidden West mentions, but in my research I was not able to find them and therefore I conclude they don't exist. All three of these places are in the Frozen Wilds. The first place where this is brought up is when before you enter Firebreak you can ask Aurea about Silent's backstory. People told me that in this backstory, Aurea will mention the Forbidden West. This is not true. The other place people told me where Forbidden West could be mentioned is in the Kaja camp in the Frozen Wilds, as well as the lake where there is a bunch of fishing Banuk. And people told me if you questioned some of the Banuk or the other NPCs at these two places, they would mention the Forbidden West. In my research, I listened through pretty much all their dialogue and they never mentioned the Forbidden West, so I therefore I conclude that these mentions do not exist. I just wanted to mention these three places, as those are places where a handful of people have told me that there are Forbidden West mentions. But as I said, I was not able to find them and I do not believe there is any Forbidden West mention in the entirety of the Frozen Wilds. So that is it for me in this video everyone. I hope this got you more excited for Forbidden West and maybe you're already crafting some of your own theories based on the mentions you heard in this video. Now if you're new to my channel here and want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching my video and I hope you have a great day. Take care.